Hello, my name is Michelle. This is Actuarial, my actuarial YouTube channel. It is Sunday at four something, and I thought that I would come on here and chat live because who has the energy to film and edit a video? Obviously not me. And this way I can get questions from you guys if anyone decides to show up. Otherwise, I will go on with the topic of the day, which is talking about what it is that I plan to work on this week as an actuary. So thumbs up this video if you like it. If you're watching this on replay, feel free to leave comments with questions so that I can make Q&A videos in the future. Cool. So it is mid-May. I work in Toronto, Canada as a property and casualty reserving actuary. I reserve for our specialty lines, lines of business at a large property and casualty insurer here in Canada. We work on a quarterly reserving cycle, meaning that every quarter we sort of have this up and down of let's review our lines of business and at the end of the quarter we will change them. So uh, the ends of the quarter would be end of April, end of June, end of September, and end of December. So May is right in the middle of the quarter. This is a good time for us to be reviewing, digging in, figuring out what it is that we want to change. So one of the things that is on my to-do list for this month, for this week, is to review. I've been asked, self-assigned three of our specialty lines of business to look into. Um, and I have not done a good job of starting on that. So hopefully at least one of the three lines, I can get a good sense of what do I want to do to this line of business. Um, oftentimes you look at a line of business and you say, mm, we don't need to make any changes right now. The assumptions that are in the system are already good. Um, what assumptions am I talking about? Um, Generally, those would be our expected loss ratios and our loss development factors. Those are the ones that we generally sprinkle around and play with as we're working. So um, what I have to do is I have to go through and I have to assess whether those assumptions are still valid or whether because of new information that we've received, because of rate changes that have happened, because of updates to new trends, we need to make adjustments to those assumptions. So one of the things that I need to do this week is at least one of the three lines that I want to be looking into. I want to look at um, my expected loss ratios and my loss development factors and make sure that those make sense. Yes. Along the way, another thing that I am doing is I need to work on a presentation that I'm making. So not this week, but the week after, my department is having a face-to-face. -face. So all the actuaries in my department across Canada are coming together in Toronto, so I don't have to travel, thankfully. And we are having sort of an internal conference where people from the different departments are going to be presenting, not different departments, different teams within the department will be presenting to each other. And people from other departments will be coming and presenting to us, which is really fun. And I have never before been asked to present at one of these. So I'm kind of excited about that. But we need to work on that. I have put together a preliminary presentation Honestly, I went a little bit bananas with it. Um, we'll see if someone calls me out and says that I shouldn't. I love, <laughs> I love making PowerPoints. If I'm making a serious presentation where it's going to VPs, SVPs, whatever, like I can make a serious presentation with some serious slides, blah, blah. But if I am making a presentation to teach other actuaries things, if I'm making a presentation just to have fun and it's casual, it's to other analysts, like I'm putting in some transitions, I'm putting in some animations, I'm making it fun. And so with this PowerPoint, <laughs> I sort of paced it by making a little person. And then I was like, he's juggling two balls, like he's asking two questions. And then he has a third question. So I added a third arm to this person. And I'm like, here's a fourth question. So I had a fourth arm on this person. And then I'm like, here, this person has five arms by the end because he's just juggling all of these questions throughout the presentation. And that sort of is supposed to show the flow of the presentation and also allow a little bit of whatever. But we'll see if my boss says it's a little bit too out there. I I have fun with it. I love making a PowerPoint. I I think PowerPoint is so fun. I couldn't do it like I'm not very good at it because I don't see very visually. I'm not like a graphic designer. I would love 
every there is so many points in my life where I've just said I would love to be able to do graphic design. I do not know how, but like playing in PowerPoint is my little opportunity to do that. And I'd say most actuaries are not super, super skilled at PowerPoint. Like we're good at it, but we don't make like those beautiful consultant level, amazing PowerPoints where they're really visual and really cool. Um, more like pre-built templates and smart art. So it doesn't take too much. You add in a couple of transitions, you're like, Poof, it's fun. Um, so I need to work on that presentation. I have on Tuesday set up a pre-presentation with some colleagues. So that'll be fun. What we're going to do is just present it, get feedback, see if they think the flow works well, see if they think I'm presenting the right level of information, the right amount of information. And I think that's really important when you're giving a presentation just to practice and get feedback. It's a really good opportunity to learn and grow and hear from other people. So hopefully, hopefully that goes well. Another thing on my to-do list is that a colleague of mine has been working on a SAS code for a couple months. Um, she is rebuilding a process that we had. It was previously built on old databases and they built us new databases. So we have to rebuild the process, but obviously the databases don't obviously line up and therefore she had to rebuild this process. Now I'm peer reviewing her code to make sure that it works the way that she wants it to and expects it to work. Um, so far we found a couple like structural issues that needed to be fixed, easy enough to fix, but still annoying because you have to rerun everything. So um, she's rerun it. I think this was her second time rerunning it after we found a couple little things that needed to be restructured. And now I'll have to look at it again and make sure that things are still working well and that the flow of the code makes sense and that what she's intending to happen happens. And I... <laughs> I don't, it doesn't bring me pleasure that she has to rerun her code. I don't want to find mistakes in her code, but like nothing brings me more pleasure than finding issues. Like it's, it's a little, it's a little treasure hunt for me. Like I love a peer review. I love going into other people's work and being like, good, good. Ooh, I found something. Like you feel like you're valuable. Now I would much prefer to not find anything and be like, mm, my colleagues solid, love them. But if you have to do a peer review, it's fun to be able to find things and be like, oh, make this better, oh, make this better and feel like you're bringing value. And a lot of people are surprised when I say it, but I love coding in SAS. I think the number one reason why I love coding in SAS is because it's the language I use all the time. And for me, SAS is like at the tips of my fingers. Other people, they come in, they know Python and they look at SAS and they're like, I don't know it. I know I said last year that I was learning Python I really didn't. I mean, I tried a little bit. I didn't learn Python. I still love SAS. I think it's so, it's nice for me. Um, my company will eventually be moving to VIA, which is the new SAS. And hopefully that's even nicer to be determined. But I have a lot of fun playing around in SAS. It's, it's what I enjoy to do. Um, the next thing on my to-do list, because my to-do list is a million years long, <laughs> is that every month, mid-month, what we have to do is we have to validate that all the correct assumptions are in the system so that when we, when the system books IBNR at the end of the month, yes, at the end of the month that the right assumptions are in the system. So, uh, I already looked at it very quickly on Friday and everything looked good, but I'll double check it Monday morning. And if Monday morning things still look good, then I'll just sign off and it'll be really easy. But Monday morning, I just need to finish that check and make sure that our assumptions are good in the system so that our IBNR is good at the end of the month. Another thing on my to-do list. Oh my gosh. Oh, I am just revealing my whole to-do list to you guys. Another thing on my to-do list is we... How do I say this? How do words work? Hmm. No one knows. This is why I edit my videos most of the time, but we don't have time to edit. I mean, I do. I have nothing but time, but I just don't feel like it. So welcome to the nonsense. Um, one thing that we do on my team is what we call tooling, where we just build cool Excel files and build dashboards and build things that makes like reserving easier. And then other teams can use them and pick them up and 
um, I love this because if I find something that can be automated, if I find something that will make my life easier, like I'll take half a day and write a VBA code to build it. I'll take three days and, and build the Excel file out so that it just makes everything easier. If you've already got a tool that does it, it just makes life fun, right? Um, so we've got a few tools on the go. There are a few things that we want to improve. And so I like keeping a lot of these little like quick win improvements, these tools in my back pocket so that whenever I don't feel like doing the things that I'm supposed to be working on, like the higher priority things, I can just build little fun things. I can take a couple hours and code something in VBA. I can take half a day and um, make a cool Excel file. Like that for me is way fun, way more fun than some of the other things. I pulled my department like a week ago and I said, what is more exciting to you? Building cool tools like automating tools, dashboards, all of that, or having those tools like building or having. And it was pretty even like 50, 50. Some people really enjoyed building tools. Some people really enjoyed having tools and that's very interesting because we are constantly as a department, as a company talking about employee engagement. And for me, it is way more fun to build a tool than to have a tool. Like the building of the thing is the fun part, not the using it. I mean, using it is whatever. Like if I, I want to build it such that it takes the least amount of time to use it, like I can just click a button and everything updates because that to me is fun. Whereas there are other people in my department who are like, I just give me good tools. Just give me good stuff. So when we're thinking about employee engagement and we have projects where you're building cool tools, like give it to the people who want to be building stuff and then they can deliver it to the people who want to be doing stuff. And then if you can divide up your tasks in a way that the people who are excited about something get to work on this and the people who are excited about this get to work on that, like everyone's going to be happier. I just want to build cool stuff, you know? That's what I want to do with my day. Um, but what I also want to do is I am taking a half day on Wednesday because it is my second anniversary, well, with my fiance, and I'm not wearing my ring right now because I take it off when I go to the gym and I did not put it back on. Oops. Um, but I am, like, a fit queen. My fun goal for the year is to try to be able to do a pull-up. And right now, I cannot do a pull-up. But by the end of the year, maybe I'll be able to do a pull-up. But that's beside the point. I'm taking a half day because it's my second anniversary. And we are going to go see Les Miserables. And it's going to be really nice. And before meeting me, my fiancé had never seen a musical. And now he's probably seen a dozen musicals. And we have tickets this year to see Les Mis and Wicked and Come From Way. I love a musical, you guys. I'm so excited about it. Anyway, that is my plan for the week. I am fully expecting it to get derailed, as it always does. Um, you go into a week with a to-do list, and then new things pop up, and people have questions, and all of a sudden, your whole to-do list gets shuffled. Sometimes you get to cross things off your to-do list, and you're like, wow, I am productive. And some weeks you go, huh. My list looks the same as it did when I started. And you're like, well, that's not ideal. But, you know, you do stuff. I organize my to-do list in OneNote. I don't feel like my OneNote is optimal, optimal, but I feel like I've got a good flow going where I keep a little to-do list on my OneNote. I have a sheet where I just, and every week I just copy over anything that needs to go. I have like a weekly to-do list and I just... That's my system. Um, I think that's that's all for me. Thumbs up this video if you want to. Um, thank you for calling, and I'll talk to you guys in another video. Bye.